Yo, what is up guys, it is Kobe, back here with another Black Ops 2 Tips and Tricks video, and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Claymore and the Bouncing Betty. Now, obviously you guys know what these things are, they've been around since Call of Duty 4 and 5, but with every new Call of Duty, they tweak them a little bit, you know, whether it's their trigger range, kill range, detonation time, you know, and the way you can survive them. So, in this video I'm going to be going over all of that stuff, showing you guys the differences between them, as well as some tips that you can use just to use them a little more effectively. Now to get started, the first thing we have to cover is the maximum trigger area for these explosives. Because they are both triggered by enemy motion, the max range at which the enemy player is detected is super important. As you can see here, the Bouncing Betty's trigger area is actually fairly large, and as you know it covers the full 360 degree area. However, although you will take damage, that does not demonstrate the maximum kill area, which is now demonstrated here in yellow. So as you can see, even though it is smaller than the trigger area, its kill range is actually pretty damn big still. So that, plus its 360 degree radius, is why so many people hate these things and why they are so good. But now let's take a look at the Claymore. So the Claymore is much more dependent on its actual placement and direction than the Bouncing Betty. And as I'm sure you guys know by now, it only has a trigger and a blast radius of about 40 degrees, which makes its effective area much, much smaller. Not only its total area, but both its trigger and its kill range is slightly shorter as well. So if you only looked at this, you would think the Betty is just far better than the Claymore, but there's a couple more things to look at to really decide its effectiveness. First, its detonation time. The time between being triggered and actually detonating is incredibly important, and more times than not, that's what determines whether or not you get the kill. Now, the C4 detonates roughly 0.15 seconds after being triggered, whereas the Bouncing Betty takes around 0.21 seconds. Now, that may not seem like much of a difference, only 0.06 seconds, but trust me, it makes the world of difference. And I'm sure you guys noticed it as well while you were playing. It's almost impossible to react fast enough to avoid being killed by a Claymore. However, if you are paying attention, it is fairly easy to avoid a Bouncing Betty. So in this area, the upper hand definitely goes to the Claymore. Now, how might you survive or counter these explosives? Well, for the Bouncing Betty, you have a bunch of different options. The easiest way, of course, is just to crouch. Past Call of Duty is yet to go all the way to prone, but in Black Ops 2, you won't take any damage whatsoever by simply crouching. This makes them insanely easy to avoid, especially if you are on the tactical layout. For the Claymore, however, changing your stance won't help you at all. Whether you're lying down, jumping, you will still receive the same amount of damage. There are also three perks that can help you survive both of these, Lightweight, Flat Jacket, and Engineer. With Lightweight, if you're rocking an SMG, a shotgun, a pistol, or just your combat knife, you can sprint directly over the Betty and survive. Although you do have to begin sprinting just right at the perfect time. For those who have seen my Flat Jacket video, you guys will know you can literally be sitting on top of either of these explosives and survive the blast if you have the Flat Jacket equipped. And lastly, besides just detecting them, Engineer delays the detonation by like 6 times for both the Betty and the Claymore as well, so you shouldn't have any problem there. So finally, let's take a look at how to effectively use each one of these. For the Betty, it is pretty simple because of its 360 degree radius. It's hard to go wrong, but my one suggestion is to always place it as low as possible. I always see people, you know, placing them on the stairs, but the best thing to do is place them at the bottom. So even if they do crouch, they will be up high enough on the stairs so you will get the kill. For the Claymore, it's just all about angles. It's not like the Betty where you just throw it and hope somebody walks by. You need to place these where you know people will be walking and angle it accordingly. You don't want your opponent to see the Claymore before it's too late for them to do anything about it, so point the lasers in the direction that they are going to be walking, not where they have walked. But after seeing and hearing all this, and from actually using them in the game, which do you prefer, the Betty or the Claymore? You know, for me, it's all situational. The kill rate percentage is definitely a lot higher with the Claymore though, just because the crouching to dodge a Betty is just way too easy, and at this point in the game, it's just second nature to hit that crouch button when you hear that click. Whereas with the Claymore, you know, there really isn't much you can do, but that's just what I think. Leave your own answer down below. But anyways guys, that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. It took me quite a bit of time to make this, so if you could support it with a like and a favorite, I'd really, really appreciate it. As you can probably tell by my voice, you know, I've had a cold for the past week, but I just really want to make a video. I didn't want to go a whole other week without making a video, so I just wanted to make this for you guys. Also, I hit 7k two days ago, so thank you guys for that. I'll try to muster up something for you guys at like 7,500 subs. Probably a giveaway. I don't know. I'll think of something. But again, thank you guys for watching. A couple of videos on screen. Go check them out if you want. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace.